this week for pesky plants we're going to be talking about autumn olive autumn olive is a fast growing shrub that can form really dense thickets that take over it's especially common in reclaimed mining sites and other disturbed high light areas like roadsides fields grasslands open woodlands but you can find it hanging out in those shadier spots just waiting for the opportunity to take off. Um, it was promoted for many years and now we know that it is too much of a good thing and not to plant it on your property. So in this edition of Pexiski Plants, I'm going to be talking a little bit about autumn olive, uh, what it looks like, why it's a problem, and how you can control it. So autumn olive or Eliagnus umbellata is a rapidly growing early colonizing species. Um, it's able to outcompete native plants, especially on poor quality sites. Its roots actually have nitrogen fixing bacteria in them that enable autumn olive to thrive in nutrient poor sites, which again, could be a good thing and is part of why it was promoted for many years. It can grow in places where other things really struggle but then it will take them over and prevent them from being able to establish. Autumn olive is easy to pick out because its leaves have a shiny silver color on their undersides. You can see me flipping over one of those leaves and these silvery scales there that really stick out as it blows in the wind. It's a multi-stemmed dense shrub that grows thickly and can form these really dense thickets that exclude native species in a range of medium to high light settings in particular. Um, autumn olive is native to Asia and it was promoted for many years in the US because its ability to thrive on those poor sites um, used as a windbreak and revegetation of disturbed areas. Uh, two, because its berries and the cover it creates are good for some wildlife. And three, because those berries are actually edible and people will eat them, harvest them, and typically turn them into fruit leather or jelly. Um, however, it's now apparent that the negatives that autumn olive has outweigh those positives. In Kentucky's woodlands, the biggest threats are in areas in and around those reclaimed mines, which were commonly planted with autumn olive. However, it's also common in a wide range of habitats, everything from your more urban areas to your really remote locations. So autumn olive can grow into a large shrub, um, really a small tree up to 20 feet tall, and it produces many stems per plant. It has this dense spreading form. Uh, you can see here with lots and lots of uh, shoots coming off of that one main plant in a bit of a tangle. Um, with that, it also has branches that have occasional spines, which can be hazardous and painful. So you can see some of those here. Uh, definitely not something you want to be running into in the woods. Its leaves are light green on the upper surface and have a distinctive silvery color on the underside, these silvery scales there. Um, they aren't too notable otherwise. They kind of have an oval shape. They're a couple inches long with smooth margins and they are alternately arranged on this branch. So you can see they uh, kind of are on opposite sides there. As with many other invasive shrubs, the leaves of autumn olive leaf out early in the season, earlier than many of our natives, and they lose those leaves later in the season than many of our native plants. In the spring, it produces abundant white and yellow flowers that can be fragrant. And these develop into berries in the late summer and fall. They start out kind of a greenish color and then they'll turn red over time. And you can see in this picture that those berries have these uh, little dots on them as well, uh, giving them a kind of a, a dotted texture. These berries are eaten by birds and can be spread long distances that way. Um, what are some lookalikes to autumn olive? Uh, the closest lookalikes are actually cousins, Russian olive and thorny olive, which are also invasive. Uh, so the good news is that if you see them, they are also a problem and you don't want them either. But autumn olive is by far the most common one in Kentucky. Depending on where you are though, there have been reports of Russian olive and thorny olive as well. 
So uh, how do they look different from autumn olive? This is Russian olive, and you can see that it's silvery not only on the underside, but also on the top of the leaf. And those leaves are more narrow, um, almost like the leaf of a willow. It's a very kind of long, narrow leaf. And then thorny olive, it has larger and wider leaves than autumn olive and uh, more thorns, right? <laughs> but the fruits of each of these also look different. And regardless, these are all invasive plants to be on the lookout for and to remove if you find. As with any invasive plant, when we're talking management, uh, it's gonna require patience and persistence. Prevention is always the best management option. So don't plant autumn olive. Uh, and if you've got it, the sooner you can get rid of it, the better. Um, I have talked with people who, you know, they were recommended to plant it. Uh, and it does rapidly colonize uh, in different areas, uh, but it's not something you want to be introducing. You want to be getting rid of that or using more valuable native species that are going to be benefiting you long term there. Um, management approaches really depend on the severity of your infestation and what else is growing with the autumn olive. Do you have one little plant growing out by itself? Do you have autumn olive mixed in through other vegetation that you value and want to keep? Or do you just have an entire field of nothing but autumn olive? Your management approach is going to vary depending on what you've got. Because it commonly forms expansive, dense thickets with nothing else growing intermixed, management of autumn olive typically looks a little different in those settings. And uh, as with other invasive plants, I encourage you to prioritize management where the greatest impact can be had. While there are different philosophies and approaches to that, many land managers will adopt the best first approach with something like autumn olive that is really well established here um, and it's not going away. I think it's really important to be thinking about how can you have the biggest sustained impact over time, something that you can continue uh, because that autumn olive will definitely come back um, even if you get rid of it once. Seedlings like these here and young plants can be pulled up either by hand or with tools to assist or managed by repeated cutting or even grazing. But management of larger infestations typically involves the use of systemic herbicides that can be applied in different ways. And it again, depends on what you have and the situation there from a foliar spray to a stem based approach with a cut stump or a basal bark treatment. Mechanical removal alone of those larger plants on a large scale uh, typically isn't ideal. First, it'll result in a lot of site disturbance, which is great for the establishment of new invasive plants. And then it will probably leave root fragments that will grow into new plants pretty quickly. In addition, any cutting that occurs without an herbicide afterwards really just sets things back, but that autumn olive is gonna sprout back up um, just as bad, if not worse. So you will have rapid, dense re-sprouts. The fact that autumn olive leafs out earlier the native plants and keeps its leaves later can be useful in management, both in terms of you having an opportunity to scout for autumn olive and other invasive shrubs when other things don't have their leaves on, but also a window of time where you can treat with foliar herbicides uh, when other things aren't going to have their leaves out then. So with a limited number of plants or with plants that are growing mixed with desirable species, a cut stump or basal bark herbicide application can be a good option uh, since those are gonna target just the autumn olive plants and not things that are nearby. Um, there are a number of effective herbicides that can be used for this approach. Commonly triclopyr uh, is used, but there are many different triclopyr formulations that can be better suited to different contexts and different application techniques. Um, in addition, there are additional surfactants and dyes that can make this work more effective and easier. I really encourage you uh, to always read that label and follow it. Uh, shop around for the right herbicide for what you're doing. And then when you do that, read that label and follow it. Not only will that give you directions for how to use it, how to be safe and how to apply that legally.
for more extensive infestations, one common strategy, this is situations where you've got nothing but autumn olive. Uh, so a huge field of autumn olive. One common strategy is to prepare a site um, first by mowing, so mechanically removing what's there. With your smaller stuff, it could be with a bush hog, with your larger tree-like plants. You might want to use a forestry head. Um, and then following that with treatment of those cut stumps with an herbicide or a foliar spray of what shoots back up. That would be later in that season or even in the following spring, uh, a foliar herbicide application of those new shoots, which will really rapidly pop up. Um, there have even been examples of aerial herbicide spray for autumn olive where people will use a helicopter to treat large expanses of nothing but autumn olive. Again, though, the goal there is really to set things back and the challenge ahead of you is how do you get something other than autumn olive colonizing there? Um, it may require extensive management, uh, bringing in seeds uh, for that, and really actively uh, monitoring the autumn olive that comes back in after you do that. So it's not a once and done approach. Um, there are many different effective herbicides for this approach um, uh, as well. And then long term, you're going to need to continue scouting and managing. Um, here's a tiny little seedling of autumn olive coming up. Um, seeds will continue to grow in a site, both from the seed bank as well as deposited by birds. Um, you may have removed the autumn olive on your property, but your neighbors may still have it, and that's going to keep coming in from birds. So something to continue being on the lookout for. In some cases, prescribed fire can be a useful part of long-term autumn olive management. Although uh, a note that fire alone is gonna be insufficient to control it because that's gonna maybe impact the top portion, but it could still sprout back up from the roots. So with that, I wanna thank you for joining me today and learning a little bit more about the invasive plant autumn olive. Um, thanks for fighting invasive plants and for promoting the health of your woodlands.